This chimpanzee looks miserable. But is she really sad, or are we just being sentimental? She could feel absolutely nothing. How can we ever know if animals have emotions like we do? Science is now beginning to piece together the evidence and is coming to a very new understanding of the hidden world of animal emotions. Does a goldfish feel imprisoned in its bowl? Is it depressed by solitary confinement? Fantasizing about a goldfish's emotional life, giving it human feelings, is called anthropomorphism, seeing animals as humans in different form. At Oxford University, Dr. Marion Dawkins, a pioneer in the study of animal emotions, believes this is a major pitfall. One of the biggest mistakes we can make, I think, is assuming that other species are exactly like us, thinking that because we know what humans feel like, we therefore, without any further investigation, know what other, other species are feeling. We could anthropomorphize, we could put human emotions into, into other species. We could be dead wrong. We could be completely wrong in, in our interpretation. We could see a human in a goldfish and be, and, and be wrong about it. So to me, it's actually very important to look at it from, from the animal's point of view, to take each individual species, to say they're different, they have different requirements, different sensory worlds. These are things we have to find out about. But science doesn't always give the results you expect. And this program will produce evidence that the emotions of other creatures may be much more human-like than we might think. The emotions that we feel are clearly written on our faces. Each child will respond differently to the same event. But in a universally understood language, they communicate very clearly what they are feeling. And even these babies seem aware of each other's feelings. If we express feelings so clearly, why shouldn't other animals? We are instinctively sure they do. So maybe we can study some animal emotions exactly the way we study human ones.